standing here in our forest garden and uh, I would like to talk today about one of our very favorite vegetables or plants out here and uh, that is exactly Good King Henry. It's, uh, it's a really really interesting plant, it has a lot of history uh, in culture in Europe and it's uh, really great for a self-sufficiency plant for the home gardener. Um, it's most known as a kind of a spinach plant so it is in the same family of spinach uh, and it has these kind of uh, spinachy leaves they are um, they're really best cooked uh, raw and salads they don't taste good they have a bitterness that I don't like and almost nobody else likes I think and uh, uh, but they're but they're really a good cooking green really nutritious and they produce over a really long period. So as a vegetable, this is really, really nice. Um, they come really early in the spring, um, together with some really early shoots, which are also uh, pretty good if you get them early enough. Our experience is they often get a little bit too big and a little woody if you don't get them early enough. So they need to be, be gathered right in the spring. Usually here, here in Denmark, it's usually April that, that we need to get on them to, in order to be able to enjoy them. Um, these leaves are, uh, like I said, very, very nutritious. So they have a, a ton of vitamins and minerals in them and, um, and harvestable over a very long period. Right now, we are uh, in the middle of summer. It's the uh, very end of July and they are, um, it's a little bit of a low point because the plant is in, is, is, it has ripe seed right now. And I would like to show that, but uh, it's uh, still good to eat even when it's in seed. Um, a few of them are are looking a little tired and you know I wouldn't pick these they have some a few brown spots and stuff on them those those ones we won't pick but there's always some new ones here and uh, if you cut the plants down earlier they'll just keep making shoots uh, with with new leaves on them and these are pretty pretty quick because the leaves are pretty big to uh, to harvest in bulk and and honestly if you have a big patch here you won't even notice you've picked and you can do it almost daily uh, as long as you have enough plants and you'll, you can make cooking, cooking greens this way in a really, really big way. Uh, we're really fond of, of big uh, bulk cooking greens because we use them a lot in, our, in, in the food we make. Um, so this has really become a favorite of ours um, through the season. Uh, something else that's really interesting about this plant is uh, it's one of the few perennial plants which seems to have potential as a as a seed crop uh, for for human consumption, and um, you know most perennial plants, they're they're busy putting a lot of their energy aside in their roots rather than making a seed crop uh, that's harvestable. Um, but Good King, Good King Henry seems to have uh, gotten it right that they save some energy for the next year. These are really long living living plants. Um, all these plants here are about seven years old now, and they're looking great as ever. They uh, they're not don't seem to be slowing down at all, and uh, and they still make a lot of seed. And uh, the seed is uh, really nice because it's it's closely related to quinoa. Uh, it's in the same genus, so it's uh, actually very closely related. And um, you could really just call it a a perennial quinoa. Uh, the seeds are black, and they have this kind of brown chaff um, around them, uh, which uh, gets washed out when you uh, when you process them to to cook them. Um, and the seeds head aren't seed heads aren't aren't really big and really abundant. Um, but then again, it's also the the harvest is quite easy, just by hand, and it's perennial, so it just comes every year. And we don't have to do anything really to maintain this patch. It's a really vigorous plant, so it actually keeps weeds out by itself as long as the plants are planted dense enough. So it's actually really, really low input for what you get out. Um, there's still a lot of experimentation needed there on uh, on a larger scale as a seed crop, but uh, we're playing with it. Here in our forest garden, we have a few patches like this. It's kind of in... Uh, and a little light shade, so it's not a, not in a full shade location, but here it's standing next to a Nanking cherry and a 
and a cornelian cherry and uh, some of the plants are actually under these trees and they're doing fine as well um, and then we have patches spread about in the, in the forest garden here and they're um, that's also really interesting that a, a seed crop like this can actually develop where it's partially shady so perhaps it could have potential on the edges of some uh, perennial tree rows um, and and be able to produce a, a staple type crop um, you know something you can actually make a meal on um, in those kind of marginal areas uh, maybe in an agroforestry setting uh, we have some experiments with that going uh, so very interesting crop and uh, nice that it's harvestable by hand um, if in a larger area it still may be uh, a good idea to cut the whole stalks and then and take the seeds off but when it's not bigger than this uh, our little forest garden here with the patches that they are we get about a, a kilo of of seeds from it just by hand harvesting each year and um, we kind of use the uh, the squeegee method which is basically using your hand as it is and you just place it down the stem where the seeds start and there's a few small leaves in there um, and then you just kind of squeegee them up like that so all the seeds are, are collected in one place. These leaves will be removed later uh, so it's not a big, not a big issue. Um, so they just come into the seed batch as it is and uh, just like that. Little, seems like a little at a time but it adds up pretty quick. I'll uh, harvest this little patch here. So now we'll do an initial cleaning of these uh, Good King Henry seeds. Um, so we need to do a bit of a, a rub for all the, all the seeds that are s sitting on the stems still, uh, like this. We, will, um, we just need to do a, a bit of a, a hand rub on the whole thing. It doesn't take very long for this small amount of seed. Um, just kind of doing like this. They come off the the stems pretty easily, but it still needs to be done. Otherwise you lose a lot of the seed when you strain out the stems. You can also do this after the, after all this is dry, um, but all these green leaves does take a bit a bit longer to dry up the whole the whole batch and they need to be stirred quite often um, so you can easily do it now as well right after after picking a bunch that's probably pretty good shake it a little bit most of the seeds go to the bottom and actually you can you can kind of clean up the clean it all up just by starting by shaking it a bit first so you know all this this is all leaf matter here so there's a few seeds in there but it's not a huge loss. We can take remove, start to remove some of that. Just kind, of, kind of scraping the surface, raking with your fingers. Um, you don't want to get any of the too much of the seed with it. It'll be wasted. Pretty good. And we can pour it over to a small bowl. Put it back through a, a seed cleaning screen 
and it, uh, yeah, I don't have the actual measurement on these, uh, on this exact one. We have different ones for different sizes of seeds, and it's it's really nice, depending on the size of the seed you have that you want to clean, to have one that's just smaller than the seeds and one that's just bigger than the seeds. So you can get all the big material out and then you can get all the smaller kind of dusty material out with the smaller screen. Um, but if you don't have that you can you can always winnow and, and do some other things. Um, with Good King Henry we'll just strain it just with this one screen. So we'll put a little bit at a time through here. Maybe about like that. Just shake it through. You can always check if more seeds are coming through by putting your hand underneath the screen. Yeah, there's still some coming through. I'll wait a little bit. There we go. Now it's just chaff that's coming through. So that's all uh, to be sorted out. That's the leaves and stems. Another batch here. That's the rest of it. And if you do it a little high and there's a bit of breeze, you can actually lose some of the chaff already. You can see it's starting to winnow out. And that's about it. So what you have left, there's a couple small pieces that uh, have been missed. Um, is uh, more or less the pure seed and uh, it has this brown uh, kind of casing uh, on the seeds still uh, and there's some insects crawling around and there's some other chaff and such so we'll we'll dry this uh, a little further uh, also because there is some moisture in these seeds still um, but without the without the leaves and the stems they'll dry a lot quicker and um, these will just we'll just sit them in a bowl in the house um, for a week or two until we feel like they're really really dry and kind of hand stir them uh, every every day or so just to keep get some of the moisture out and then they'll be ready to store uh, and then they'll be ready to cook them after that here we have our good king henry seeds in a jar in the kitchen um they haven't been further cleaned than uh than just strained and dried and uh, now it's time to eat them we'll have some for dinner so they're just like any other cooking grain. Uh, usually we do like two parts water, one part grain. So we'll, I'll measure it in a glass. Um, so this is the portion we'll eat tonight. So we'll measure one, one glass here. Um, and so this portion, uh, now it needs to be cleaned. So these seeds have uh, a bit of brown chaff around them and they have a layer of saponins. And saponins are kind of a bitter soapy substance and although they're toxic in kind of large amounts, it's impossible to eat enough because it tastes so bad. So really we have to get those off of the surface. Um, and this is the same as quinoa. Quinoa has the same uh, saponins uh, on the surface. Um, but of course when you buy quinoa, they've already been kind of industrial cleaned. So they're, um, they're ready to just boil and eat. Um, but these ones we have to do ourselves. Um, so I pour them into this blender here. And uh, now this one's a little wet, so let's get a little water. What we wanna do is we wanna have kind of a rough, a rough scraping. It could, you could also just do this rubbing the seeds between, between your hands. Um, uh, we have a we have a hand blender which goes at a pretty slow speed. So I've just put a whole bunch of water in on top of that one glass of uh, of seeds, and we'll take it over here to our blender. And I want it to go pretty slow, so I'm not actually chopping up the seeds. But what I'm doing is I'm kind of r roughing up the outside enough that the chaff will be rubbed off and some of the saponins. And we'll do this a few times. So 
that was the first rinse. And if you look on here, you can actually see some some bubbles here. That's actually you can actually use saponins as soap. Um, they will actually function for that. It's of course really hard to use this water with all the chaff in it and everything. So, but that's a good sign that the saponins are coming out. And if you look at it here, uh, the good seeds. Um, they sink down to the bottom. They're heavy and solid and they sink to the bottom and all this water with the bad seeds and the chaff we're pouring that off and then we'll put some new water on. And this is all stuff that's floating. See it down at the bottom. So we'll put some more water on it. Still soapy on the surface. I'll do one more time. Should be pretty good, so I think we'll take these into the pot now. Get a little water. Awesome. Right, now we'll just measure the water for the cooking. And we'll put a little less than two because there's already some in there. And then it's just boiling it, just like quinoa. Quinoa Henry. <laughs> so this is quite good on salads. We'll that tonight. And there we go. 